yes my dear let me again uh, introduce my accounting standard made easy book that is um, at the same time my classes this advanced accounting made easy book like every each and every concept of the standard is explained with number of examples those are called concept capsules in the text so i mean when you read the after immediately after reading the concept then you will have one question so that if you that will test whether you have understood the concept correctly or not okay so and there are number of places like uh, all these charts what i am presenting right now in the um, in this class right that is also from the textbook itself and with respect to advanced accounting classes my dear is as you know you can um, speak to your friends who have taken the classes right they will be 100% happy and we have covered like each and every concept right with journal entry help and uh, i mean you will enjoy the class thoroughly that much i can tell you okay if you are interested yes please uh, be in touch with the below numbers right chalo let's get into the next standard which is accounting standard 26 intangible assets okay right intang what is intangible asset right intangible asset is an identifiable non monetary asset without physical substance without physical substance which is held for held for producing goods or providing services or administration purpose correct or for rental purpose right so here what is the important point which is identifiable identifiable in the sense what i should be able to sell it i should be i, I mean i should be able to identify it separately from the goodwill right so how do you identify how do you say that i should be able to rent it i should be able to sell it i should be able to borrow it or whatever it is you can you will be able to do that particular asset then it is then it is identifiable we'll call you should be able to separate it from the goodwill that means if you say there is an intangible asset you will be you, you, to purchase that you have to purchase the entire company then that is not intangible asset as per the definition okay right and without physical substance that you must have understood it is a non monetary item what is non monetary item which is not a monetary item what is monetary item monetary item is nothing but cash in hand i mean cash in hand bank i mean cash in cash equivalent at the same time that is an asset which is receivable in nature or it is a liability which is payable in terms of money not in i mean not in kind okay which is payable in terms of payable or receivable here it's an asset na which which is receivable in terms of money then only it is called monetary but here non monetary so which is not monetary is a non monetary we will have a good discussion about this in accounting standard 11 okay which will come maybe after some three four standards now how do you recognize it yes yes like similar to accounting standard 10 my dear this will be recognized when it satisfies the intangible asset definition at the same time two conditions those two conditions are nothing but asset conditions that is probable future economic benefits inflow at the same time the cost or value should be measured reliably anyhow initially we'll be measuring everything at cost that's why we use the word cost should cost should be measured reliably right so initially when you are purchasing correct now what are the ways of purchase so this here standard has told us like there are five methods of purchasing one is by payment of cash or credit right issue of shares securities share or securities exchange that is barter system or as part of amalgamation you are purchasing correct now you purchase the entire company along with the com along with the entire company what have you got my dear you have got the these assets also intangible assets also and internal generation yes you have done research development and you have invented some product i mean some intangible assets then how are you supposed to recognize those things that also is getting discussed here so if it is cash or credit yes purchase price at the same time any non refundable taxes correct na right any registration charges brokerages any professional charges for legal installation charges software or something can be there which needs to be installed correct na right any all the directly attributable expenditure to bring the intangible asset for its intended purpose ready to use intended purpose minus any duty drawbacks or discounts or government grants all that is going to be reduced okay yeah if it is sir if it is purchased via shares if it is purchased via shares right this is like a barter system kind only correct na what will happen fair value model only will follow in accounting standard 26 in case fair value in the sense what the fair market value of what you gave or fair market value of what the intangible asset you got it whichever is clearly evident will be the value at which 
new tangible asset which you are taking in that will be recognized okay right next sir if you are doing the or the exchange of asset here also exchange of asset also same thing fair market value of the asset given why fair market value of asset given sir see cost is something what you lost correct now what have you lost i gave my asset so the value of it is what you lost exactly so that's why we first prefer give preference for the market value of what you gave right that if it is not clearly evident then only you will take the fair market value of what you have taken okay right whichever is clearly evident will be done here suppose in addition to this if you had given any cash plus or minus if you had given that also will be adjusted sometime what happens you will give the asset and you may give little more as cash or you may get the cash then it will be automatically plus or minus we are going to do it now next point is what as part of amalgamation correct now you have done the amalgamation yeah here first if you remember accounting standard 14 accounting standard 14 says amalgamation sort of two two types amalgamation in the nature of purchase amalgamation in the nature of merger see when it is amalgamation in the nature of merger correct now you can't do anything why you cannot do anything amalgamation in the of merger it says very clearly all the assets and liabilities should be acquired all the assets and liabilities should be recorded book value only correct na only for a change of any accounting policy valuation something that that purpose i mean method of depreciation such kind of things you can change it otherwise it should be recorded book value so then i cannot do anything correct so in case of amalgamation in the nature of merger it will be recorded book value no it is amalgamation in the nature of purchase sir okay then first thing like whatever the intangible asset which are sitting in the books of the seller whether it is identifiable yes it is identifiable sir ha huh. then first prior first you will ask does it has an active market which i said that intangible which is sitting in the selling company books okay whether it is recorded not recorded by the selling company still does it has an active market yes active market is there then you can consider whatever the fair value of the asset no please consider that number you should record it that value in the purchasing company books of account no so it does not have an active market sir oh if it does not have an active market no then you can take you can maximum value of it should be what can be the maximum value the value of the intangible asset cannot cross the goodwill value that means so goodwill how much you determined earlier the entire maximum the entire goodwill value should be allocated to the intangible asset okay this is some important point generally it is never asked but yes it has the importance to ask next last concept of initial recognition is internal generation what is internal generation we have done the research and we have invented so internal generation may what do we say standard says internal generation of goodwill and internal generation of any other intangible assets internal generation of goodwill is obviously prohibited because internal it see for the generation of goodwill you cannot have any cost you cannot say this is generation of goodwill and goodwill as we told internal generation goodwill cannot reliably cash cannot be measured reliably since cash cannot be measured reliably then asset only cannot be doesn't satisfy the asset condition itself then you cannot recognize the asset correct na then sir no 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 internal generation of other intangible assets what are you supposed to do see generation will not like uh, it it cannot happen just like that so then it will have a process the entire process is going to be divided into two parts one is research phase next one is next one is development phase whatever the expenditure correct now first what is research phase you mean sir yes research phase means what research is the original and planned investigation investigation you are digging you are trying to invent something correct now for scientific and technical knowledge so in the research mein what do you get you will get the knowledge whether that will be able to get you profits in the actual business or not that is secondary will i be able to implement that knowledge in my business and i will be able to make the money or not that i don't know okay that's why whatever the expenditure you have incurred with respect to research is supposed to be charged to profit and loss immediately you will not be able to defer the same you have to charge it off okay right sir what about the development expense development what is development phase development means whatever the knowledge you have got <coughs> you have got it in the um research you know that application that is application of research knowledge or some other knowledge for what purpose for production of new or substantially new got my point production of new or substantially new products prior to commencement of the commercial production 
till the date of commercial production then it will be what is that intangible asset under development once the commercial production starts then it will be turned into intangible asset so that's why wip correct now which wip intangible asset under development that is nothing but like a cwip cwip word will use it for the physical assets here intangible asset iad i, I mean iad ia ud correct now under development we call it okay right so during this after completion of research phase till the commercial production starts this between cost whatever you have incurred for the development that you can capitalize it but okay when it is under development what are you supposed to do as per accounting standard 28 you are supposed to check for the impairment check for the impairment will, will there be any i mean will you be able to recover correct me if you remember accounting standard 28 recoverable amount i mean subsequently will i be able to recover the money from this such intangible asset under development if so if you are going to able to recover it no problem otherwise you are supposed to write it off as an impairment loss okay right so again sir can i recognize the intangible asset and development as an asset yes you can recognize my dear but subject to the six conditions which are there on the screen if you satisfy all the six conditions on every balance sheet date you should satisfy if you satisfy all the conditions and every balance sheet date you are supposed to demonstrate if you are able to demonstrate then you will be able to take it to keep it in the balance sheet sir i am not able to demonstrate then please charge it to profit and loss statement immediately remember one point once intangible asset we have correct the development cost is charged to profit and loss statement it can never be reversed it can never be reversed means once gone means swaha gone that's all it will not come back i hope you understood right this is one important point to remember next sir under intangible asset and development what all the cost you can capitalize it see intangible asset means you, you you are developing something you will be requiring the raw material you are requiring the people correct na people means you will be paying the salaries wages overheads correct na overheads which are directly attributable to this development yes all the expenditure which are directly attributable to development and one more thing generally development will not happen in one month or two months of time so it may take more than 12 months then it then the intangible asset will be a qualifying asset as per accounting standard 16 that's why the borrowing cost of that if you are taking any loan and that loan borrowing cost is supposed to be capitalized okay right which should not be capitalized these are all general things my dear one is selling and administration overhead and general administration or i mean selling and administration both i mean to say abnormal loss i told you at the beginning itself initial operating losses with respect to pp also i told it cannot constitute an asset any training cost to operate the asset see if i give a training to people how to use the asset no that in that adds the value to the people but it doesn't add value to my asset correct na you should have hired people who have got the knowledge already also right right that you wanted to use your your existing resources that's why you are training them and you wanted to use the same guys that is up to you that is a training cost that can never be part and parcel of intangible asset cost it should be charged to pnl as and when it is incurred and one more important beautiful concept na right what cannot be correct na suppose i have spent some money it doesn't satisfy my intangible asset definition it doesn't satisfy my asset definition also it doesn't satisfy two conditions of asset then what should i do you should charge it off immediately what are the examples it's very clearly given see 1 2 3 4 5 what is that my dear yes it should be i mean what is that example primary expenditure yes primary primary expenses should be charged to pnl yes any uh, what is the product launch expenditure any kind of opening ceremony expenditure yes training expenditure in general advertisement and promotional expenses reallocation relocation everything all these things are supposed to be charged to pnl in the year in which it is incurred okay you don't need, you don't have an, you don't have a concept cards i wanted to uh, defer it no my dear you cannot defer it nothing is supposed to be done okay this is with respect to intangible asset next sir are we supposed to do amortization yes if you want to amortization you need some basically some two three things three things are required what is the cost so we have determined and what is the method correct in which method i should amortize it next thing what is the life of the asset you are supposed to take it next one is what is the residual value you need to determine correct now method method is same like accounting standard 10 the method which method you want to follow the method should reflect the pattern of consumption of future economic benefits 
in which ratio you are expecting to get the economic benefits to the entity in that ratio you are supposed to depreciate it so, sir i don't know in which method it will come that's why generally people do follow slm method i mean slm method in the sense you are assuming that my economic benefits are coming equally every year that's all okay right sir what is the period i should take see what is the period means there is a rebuttable assumption by the standard rebuttable assumption like standard is very clear no i will i am saying that life of intangible asset cannot be more than 10 years does it mean that it should not be more than 10 years no 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 it is assumption if you have any proof no no it's not 10 years it's more than 10 years if you can prove it no then welcome karen you are able to you can continue for more than 10 years i hope you understood yes it can be for more than 10 years also if you are able to prove it if you are not able to prove it then it is supposed to be only maximum 10 years got my point that's it my dear this is about accounting standard 26 let's look at this uh, accounting standard 28 impairment of assets okay yeah this is one good standard and important standard then i mean already one or two times questions have been asked from this standard okay what is impairment loss? When do you say it's an impairment loss? When the carrying amount is greater than the recoverable amount, then we will say there is an impairment loss. Okay. What is that? I said carrying amount. What is carrying amount? What is appearing in the books of account? What is that appearing in the books of account? That is nothing but cost of fixed assets or intangible assets minus accumulated depreciation minus correct na? accumulated impairment loss already if there is any. Okay. That number compared with the recoverable amount. What is the recoverable amount? Recoverable amount is neither, I mean, uh, net selling price, NSP we call, either NSP or value news, whichever is higher. Okay, right. The outcome of this, whichever is higher, is going to be compared with the carrying amount. If that is lower than, that means carrying amount is greater, then that is up, that is considered as impairment loss. That is supposed to be charged to p and in general, or sometimes it, may, it can be charged to revaluation reserve in the given circumstance. I will explain that. What do you mean by value in you, sir? Yes, we are going to discuss that. Value in you is nothing but present value of the future economic benefits. I mean, future cash flows arising from the usage of the asset plus by selling the asset at the end of the useful life. That also, everything in present value, the future cash flows will be turned into present value. Then that value is called value in use. So then what is NSP? NSP is net selling price, I told. I mean, if I sell it, if I sell the if if I sell the asset right now in the market, what do I get? Minus any selling costs. That is cost of disposal, selling cost, brokerage cost, whatever you call those expenses are supposed to be reduced. What comes to my pocket at the end of the day? That is called net selling price. Okay, right. Value news or NSP, whichever is higher, is equal to recoverable amount. Right. As I told you, if there is an impairment loss, where do I charge it? Correct. Now, for that question, first you should have one question. What is that? Was it? I mean, whether that fixed asset or intangible asset, intangible asset, you cannot revalue anyhow. I forgot to tell you, mention that intangible assets, there is no option to revaluation. Correct. In accounting standard 10, fixed assets, I mean, PPE can be revalued. Okay. Right. That the option doesn't exist in the country. Okay. Right. What was the was the asset was the asset revalued at any point of time? First question. If it is a PPE, yes. Suppose, sir, never it was revalued. Then there is no discussion. The impairment, whatever the impairment loss you are going to get, that will be charged to profit and loss statement. No, no, sir, it was already it was already revalued. Okay, it was revalued. Then do you have the revaluation reserve in the balance sheet? Yes. If you say there is a revaluation reserve in the balance sheet, then first the impairment loss should be adjusted with the revaluation loss. To the extent it is available, if the loss is more than the revaluation reserve sitting in the revaluation revaluation reserve with respect to that asset, not entire revaluation reserve which is sitting in the balance sheet. Okay, with respect to that asset, I mean say example 100 rupees with respect to that asset revaluation reserve is there, but I got an impairment loss of 120 rupees. To the extent of 100, you debit the revaluation reserve. To the extent of 20, you are going to do the charge to profit and loss statement. Okay, so revaluation reserve doesn't, I mean, it's already, I mean, uh, Kali or whatever, it's nothing is there. Then it is supposed to, it's obviously supposed to be charged to profit and loss statement. Okay, right. Um, this is if they already revalue, this is not that so important. Right, next question will come, sir, are you supposed to check the impairment loss every year? No, not at all, actually. Okay, when, uh, when are we supposed to check, sir? You are supposed to check the impairment. You are supposed to check the impairment only when there is an indication. 
what indication the symptom basically what kind of indication that indications can be external indication indication can be internal source internal indication external indication okay what is internal source i mean physical damage of the asset correct now the company decided let me close down this uh, factory or correct now there is a business restructuring activity could be taking place and the company the, the performance of the particular asset is not that great correct now we have budgeted for something and what is happening is something different correct now such kind of indications if you find that time only you are supposed to go for a formal calculation of impairment loss otherwise it is not required external source correct now external source may be because of the i mean because of the market because of the market forces i i mean my value of the asset has come down i am not able to because of the technology loss or market recession could be whatever the reason correct i am not able to i am not able to this asset is not performing i am not able to sell the products produced by the asset then also it is supposed to be you are supposed to do this job okay right msp how do you determine msp yes first thing is there any binding agreement for this if you have yes then take that price minus cost of selling any brokerage anything that you will get it no sir i don't have binding sale agreement correct now does it do you have a trade active market in for that specific asset if you say yes i have it active trade market correct now then what is the market price available in the market yes please take that and minus disposal cost you reduce it no sir there is no active market then you are supposed to correct now what is the recent recent uh, transaction price in the past maybe sir 6 months before it has happened then for the 6 months before transaction price you are supposed to do plus or minus because last 6 months there must be market change plus minus usage of that so many things will be there you can adjust some plus or minus then minus selling cost supposed to be taken no sir there is no active market at all then you have to get it valued by a valuer okay yes that is the only one way and yes that is how it is going to be determined the nsp my dear okay sir value news how do you determine as i already told you value news nothing but the present value of the future cash flows by using the asset suppose the life of the asset remaining life of the asset is equal to 5 years how much cash can be generated for next 5 years by using the asset right you will use asset for remaining life means 5 years at the end of the fifth year will you be able to sell it yes you will sell some scrap value will come yes that scrap value fifth year it will come which you have studied in the final financial management that also supposed to be taken into present value correct na right and generally how are you supposed to consider correct na you should not consider like more than 5 years and like see is it reliable number correct na forecasting should not be too much uh, i mean thinking there should be some reliability some trustworthiness should be there if it is there then you can take it for a little bit beyond the 5 years also and if you want to say growth every year my growth will be 20% sir 20% sir 20% it cannot be like 20 20 percent days it cannot grow correct na if you say this this market is growing like 20 percent days uh, i mean every year like that no then there will be lot many competitors and your company will be out correct na so that's why don't take your company growth then take the market growth market is an average growth correct average of the all the companies that should be more reliable that's why consider the more reliable information my dear rather than rather than your company your product or something okay right that is the way sir so next discounting rate project future cash flow supposed to be brought into present value correct so that's why uh, what is which rate i should take it before tax rate or after tax rate? is always before tax rate because impairment loss will be charged before the tax correct later only tax expenditure is going to come in the profit and loss statement so which rate i should use it correctly speaking no the the irr irr of the specific asset irr of the means internal rate of return of the specific asset you are supposed to use it for the discounting purpose got it sir at the beginning it is very difficult for me to determine correct na okay if it is determined no then you can take the uh, i mean w you can start with wacc weighted average cost of capital in the wacc also cost of equity you should use the capm method model what is capm capital asset pricing model correct na rf plus beta into rm minus rf you must have studied in financial management that is there in group 2 anyhow correct na no sir that is also difficult then incremental borrowing what is this mental borrowing sir no it's not mental incremental means if you take an additional borrowing no then that's that rate is supposed to be taken sir nothing i have not borrowed additionally also okay then my normal market rate of borrowing you take it but that should be adjusted with the risk correct na suppose i have got two businesses right both the business risk will not be same no 
Suppose my, my WCC will be 10% I got it. I can't apply 10% for a gold business, 10% for the same textile business. Because say example gold, gold business has a more risk. Then 10% is plus 2% I should apply. This has a lesser risk. Then 10% plus 1% only I, I can apply. Or 10 only I may apply it. So that's why you should apply your brain when you are applying this discounting rate. Not so blindly you are supposed to do it. Got it? Right. Next important concept. Okay, if it is a CGU, what is cash generating units? Sir? Cash generating units is the smallest identifiable group of assets that can generate a largely independent cash flows from the other group of assets. Okay, yeah, it's a smallest to identifiable group of assets that can generate largely independent. It should generate the large independent. It, 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 the group itself can generate the cash flows. Then only you will be able to generate the value news, right? Value news is nothing but the present value of the future cash flows. Correct now. I mean, if you don't know how much this group of assets generates, then what is there in the CG you wanted to say? Correct now, right? Here now there is one small point, right? How do you in case of in, in case of CG, what do you do, sir? In case of CG, you know, first, I mean, group of assets are there. In this group of assets, first for the group of assets, you will carrying amount, you will take it. Group of assets, recoverable amount, you will be able to calculate it. Correct now. If there is an impairment loss, that impairment loss should be allocated to each of the asset in the ratio of the carrying amount. First, you are supposed to allocate it. Right. Next question. Sometime what happens, you must have acquired another company. Correct now. Along with the another company, correct now, goodwill also you must have recognized in the books of account. Yes. If I have recognized the amalgamation has happened, so goodwill is there. So goodwill is there means first question should come. Correct now. Can the goodwill be allocated to the number of CGUs which are arising on a reasonable basis? Assume yes, sir, I will be able to allocate it. Then excellent. Suppose I acquired a company. In that company, what happened? There are two CGUs have come. I have paid 100 rupees of goodwill. Sir, I will be able to allocate it on 50-50 like that something. Okay, excellent. Then what are you supposed to do? CGU 1, correct now, this group of assets value plus the 50 rupees of goodwill, together you are supposed to compare it with the recoverable amount. Then if there is any impairment loss is there, first you should hit the goodwill. Correct now, the remaining, uh, correct now, the remaining, suppose I have got impairment loss of 70 rupees, to the extent of 50 you have to remove the goodwill and the 20 rupees should be charged to the group of assets in the ratio of their carrying amount. Okay, that is how you are supposed to do it. Suppose, sir, I'm sorry, I'm not able to allocate it. I'm not able to allocate the goodwill on a reasonable or logical or consistent basis. Oh, is it? Then you cannot cannot do for A and B, A and B CGUs are there. You can't identify. That's why what are you supposed to do first? A plus B plus, correct now, A plus B plus goodwill. You are supposed to take it. Then together, correct now, first you are supposed to try at what level goodwill can be. I mean, actually, there is one concept called uh, what is that called a top top down up approach, bottom up approach. Okay, top down approach in the sense, okay, you can't uh, locate it for group A, group B. Okay, now you should think actually like group A, hundred percent assets. Group B, some assets. If I take it, can I allocate it? You should try. No, not possible. If it is not possible, then you should say A assets plus B assets plus goodwill. Then you have to combine everything. That should be compared with the recoverable amount. If there is any Loss, impairment loss comes up. That should be adjusted with the goodwill on priority basis. And remaining is supposed to be allocated in the proportion of the assets, group of assets, carrying amounts of A and B. That is how you are supposed to do it. Correct. Now, when you are allocating the loss, you have to always remember one point, my dear. Okay. The sum asset is there. 1000 rupees. Sir, impairment loss, 500 rupees. So, after impairment loss, how much is the value of the asset? 500. Right. Now one basic question, common sense question should come. Sir, if I sell this asset alone, no, in the market I will get 700 rupees. Then it doesn't make sense to keep the asset correct, no, to write off to 500 rupees. No, because independently if I sell the asset also 500 should come. That's where the standard has kept one overall shot. I mean, what, what is the overall bench? What is the benchmark? The impairment loss, the carrying amount of the asset should not be reduced below the highest of, below the highest of means after impairment loss, it should not be coming down the below the net, net selling value. That means you are supposed to like out of 1000 rupees, you should maximum cut impairment loss up to 300 because that NRV or NSP is going to be as the asset is equal to 700. Our value in use are zero. 
correct now whichever is higher this rule i have given excellent example in the textbook that will be able to explain you in detail okay right so i have got some corporate assets okay if you have some any corporate assets yeah what is that corporate asset yeah corporate asset means a head office building correct now head office building cannot cannot be a cgu because it does not does not generate independent largely independent cash flows because that is that uh, head office and research and development office or something like that no it cannot generate that's why what are you supposed to do first you should try to allocate this sir head office building i have got three cgus okay can i make it like 1 by 3 1 by 3 1 by 3 head office assets should be added to this one any logical basis if it is possible you are supposed to allocate it sir nothing is possible then as i told you na no, right bottom down approach i mean cgu 1 cgu 2 cgu 3 plus corporate assets then that term total is going to be compared with the recoverable amount of it okay like that you are supposed to determine but remember corporate assets are not like goodwill like it's not like first loss should be adjusted with the goodwill no goodwill goodwill if it is there goodwill should be adjusted but that rule of adjustment first with the goodwill only for the goodwill nothing else what my point yeah so here also here in the ratio of the carrying amount only you are supposed to adjust it reversal of impairment loss okay reversal of impairment loss can you reverse it yes see earlier i found that the market is down market i mean there is a recession there is something that's why i have created the impairment loss but now the market is picking up market is growing correct earlier corona was there that time market was down now it's picking up like anything now that that earlier situations were not there those situations were reversed maybe because of the external thing or internal thing correct now maybe some asset was not performing we spent another 1 lakh rupees or 10 lakh rupees now we have done some new technology we brought in now the products are superb correct now product market is picking up could be na then you will be able to reverse it okay sir while reversing how should i do sir right one 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 basic concept you should remember if goodwill is once charged off correct now once charged off there is no chance of reversing it because what you have already charged off goodwill if you reverse it na what will happen won't it become like self generated goodwill my dear that's why there is no chance of reversal of goodwill which is already charged off okay right sir okay next thing sir earlier it was like earlier there was there was no revaluation earlier if it was no revaluation what would have done you would have already charged to pnl correct now then reversal reversal in the sense what should happen asset account debit to correct now asset account debit to impairment loss or accumulated impairment loss i mean asset account debit to impairment loss you are supposed to do it Or accumulated impairment loss account debit to impairment loss P and R amount is supposed to be done, right? No, sir. I, earlier I have adjusted the revaluation reserve. Okay, then as an account debit to revaluation reserve to the extent earlier you have reversed. No, that extent you bring it back and to the impairment loss that is the balancing figure supposed to sit here. Okay, that's about your accounting standard twenty eight. Okay, now let's go to accounting standard twenty nine. This is one beautiful standard, a small standard, not it's not like something great and it will not take too much of time. Okay, this standard talks about the headings that talks about provision, contingent liability, and contingent asset. But actually, it has five topics. Okay, reimbursement of expenditure is one more, and restructuring expenditure also one more topic is there. Anyhow, let's go to the first important topic here is the provision. Sometimes questions have been asked on the reimbursement of asset. Many students do not know even like this question has come from which standard. They will be thinking like because if you don't know about the entire things about the standard, no, they can play like anything. Okay, right. That's why you want to learn the conceptually, or you want to just by heart something and just clear examination later will cry. That's you want to cry in the exam also could be no correct. The number of ways of people taking decisions. right next provision what is a provision provision is a liability which is measured by significant degree of estimation okay what is liability liability is a present obligation which you discussed already present obligation arising from the past events and expected future economic benefits outflow from the entity what do you mean by present present means it is there liability is present as on 31st march correct na and it is probable probable in the sense i told you which is more likely than not that means there are more than 50% chances to i mean incur the expenditure rather than not incurring the expenditure correct na what is obligation obligation may be uh, what is it obligation is a duty responsibility it may come from the law it may come from the statute it may come from the contracts it may come from the self binding sometimes 
okay self binding because of the customer relation we cannot say you will be handling it okay right sir when should i recognize the provision provision means a liability you told when should i recognize there are three conditions my dear when you satisfy all the three conditions that day only you will recognize the provision what are the three conditions there should be present obligation arising from the past event there should be probable future economic benefits outflow and that should be measured reliably these are the three condition only when you satisfy all the three conditions then you should record the provision okay sir shall we discount the provision like you taught in accounting standard 28 no way my i mean sorry not no way it is actually but it is sub, it is a subject small part actually when what is that small part if the provision is related to a fixed asset correct now if the provision is related to a fixed asset got my point yes if it is related to fixed asset then discounting is required otherwise provision is not not supposed to be discounted yeah which is that provision that is called decommissioning provision decommissioning restoration similar liabilities you are supposed to make a provision today i constructed a building correct na on the land which is taken from the government government will tell very clearly boss i gave you land when you after 100 years of time no what are you supposed to do my dear you are supposed to clean it up clean it up in the sense i don't want your building i want the land back that means you have to demolish the entire building do the clean job correct and then only hand over to me that is the basic thing which is mentioned in the agreement it will be in every agreement with the government lease and any long term leases it will be very clearly mentioned so if you want to demolish and if you want to clean it no it may take like it may take 1 crore 2 crore rupees like after some number of years what will be the inflation after some 100 years my dear correct now every year if you take like 4% 4% 4% if it goes up all so it's going to be huge number that number you are supposed to bring it down into present value and you are supposed to make a provision for the same thing sir it is not related to ppe it is like a warranty provision or it is like some other some other provision then no need of discounting under those circumstances under india is 37 my dear which is obviously not part of syllabus every provision is supposed to be discounted for what is it every provision is now supposed to be discounted for unless if it is expected to be settled within 12 months otherwise everything is supposed to be done okay excellent what is a contingent liability contingent liability there are two definitions okay first one is what my dear it's a probable correct now possible obligation not probable it's a possible obligation arising from the past event existence of which will be confirmed by occurrence or non occurrence of one or more future events which are not under the control of the entity which are not under the control of the entity correct na it is possible possible in the sense may happen may not happen and whether are you liable still no i don't know my liability existence of which will be confirmed by future activity which is not under my control which may happen may not happen under that circumstance correct na yeah i have given a some financial guarantee to some some party if that guy pays then i'll not liable if that guy does not pay then i'll be liable whether he'll pay or not under his control not under my decision correct na or one more thing is what my dear there is a present obligation arising from the past event but correct na it's a present obligation yes present obligation but the outcome of it correct na whether it will be probable or not i don't know how much will it be i don't know under that circumstance also suppose there is a serious legal legal case is there we did some mistake but i don't know how much am i going to lose and i am not able to decide that how much will be why sir because just it has not even come for trial sir i mean people have not yet uh, discussed we have not met in the court only i mean correct na no? yes that's why i am not able to decide then at least you make a present the contingent liability okay right next is contingent asset contingent asset is simple like same as the a definition possible obligation plus a possible asset you should keep it possible asset arising from the past event existence of which will be confirmed by occurrence or non occurrence of one or more future event which are not under the control of the entity listen possible asset you have got actually three uh, i mean three small things i can keep it here possible asset is it probable if you say it's probable sir correct no it's virtually certain uh, yes sir virtually said then recognize the asset man why are you bothering about correct na? sir contingent asset sir which probable sir probable hai to na don't record in the don't record probable who knows yaar probable in the sense more than 50% but guarantee ya? not guarantee i am expecting something will come it may not come no exactly that's why it's probable yes this is an exception to the basic rule of asset definition okay right so that's why if it is probable you show it in the board of directors report okay sir it is possible sir 
possibility to shut up that's all i means you don't need to show in the boards of board of directors report in the financial statement nowhere it is going to be presented that is about the contingent asset reimbursement this is also an exception to the asset definition what is reimbursement reimbursement of expenditure correct so i spend something got my point i spend something i do do you have right to recover that money from somebody else if you say yes i have written already agreement and yes then only you should recognize the asset receivable otherwise no unless until it comes only on cash basis you are supposed to recognize it because you don't know if it is not mentioned in any agreement it is not promised by the other party how do you know tomorrow he will say when did i say correct i will not pay you karke bol sakta i don't want to create an asset today and i don't want to write it off when he says i will not pay correct now that's why not allowed it is supposed to be recognized only when there is a virtual certainty that i am going to get back the money okay sir so i suppose i am supposed to payable to some party i am supposed to receive same amount i am supposed to receive from other party these both are supposed to be presented in the balance sheet as an asset and liability you are not supposed to offset it but in the, in the pnl as an expenditure and income you can offset it but not in the balance sheet that is what said by the standard next concept is restructuring provision so what is restructuring provision restructuring is a program which is planned and controlled by the management and which will affect materially the the way in the, the way in which you are doing the business or the scope of entire business so in this case what are we supposed to do you should make a provision okay if it is if it again provision means do you have any separate conditions or no same three conditions of provisions are supposed to be followed if you satisfy the same three conditions there is the present obligation arising from the past even probable future economic benefits in flow and it should be measured reliably then only that restructuring provision you are supposed to make it in the books of account otherwise no way is supposed to be okay let's get into accounting standard 11 that is fx of changes in foreign currency or foreign exchange rates okay this is a, again a small standard see basically in this standard there are three topics okay what are the three topics my dear that is the trans foreign currency transactions directly taken place in the company books of account and topic number 2 is yes there is a separate foreign entity i mean foreign operation that is a foreign branch or foreign subsidiary foreign joint venture foreign associate correct na where the transactions will be taking place in that company and at the end of the balance sheet i mean at the end of the year correct na when you are consolidating that into the main company and then how do you translate those things okay and the difference is how do you account this topic number 2 and the topic number 3 is that nothing but forward foreign currency forward contracts how are how are you supposed to account it okay let's get into the first topic when the foreign currency for, foreign currency transactions taken place how are you supposed to account it yes see the journal entry what you are supposed to record will remain same only the amount for the foreign currency amount you are supposed to obviously because you will be maintaining the books of accounts in rupees in the country so you are supposed to translate all the foreign currency transactions using the rate and the date of transaction is the rate and the date of transaction okay right so that is the first and foremost important and here in this okay um in this what is happening there is one important definition which is monetary item as i discussed in accounting standard 26 also monetary item is nothing but money held assets which are receivable in terms of money liabilities which are payable in terms of money not money's worth okay which are fixed or determinable that is the definition it says okay right what is the accounts receivable yes receivable in terms of money yes yeah, what do you get it i'll get money from the customer okay trade payable yes i am supposed to pay cash to the my supplier correct na right a loan taken loan taken you are supposed to give cash only correct na not i will not give asset to them then those are all monetary assets sir prepaid expenditure prepaid expenditure is like you already paid the money what are you going to get back is an asset okay i mean some, some services basically correct na but that is not something receivable in cash that's why it is a non monetary item why do you need to bother about it because subsequently on the balance sheet date the which rate i should take it that is based on the classification of monetary and non monetary that's why you should be very keen on the definition of monetary and non monetary if you say i don't know this then you don't know accounting standard 11 that's all okay right recognition initially what are you, what what is i told you yes you should use the rate and the date of transaction sometimes you can apply the average rate sir so which average rate generally weekly average or monthly average you are supposed to take it my dear not in yearly average 
okay for the transactions which are taking place directly in the company books of account you're not supposed to take the yearly average i told no weekly bi weekly or year or monthly average is maximum that's what you will take it subsequent on the balance sheet date what are you supposed to do then i told you on the balance sheet date it depends upon the classification that is monetary non monetary classification basis it will happen right so on the balance sheet date what do you say all the monetary item like trade debt debtors receivables i mean receivables payables loan taken loan given okay investment in debentures that things are supposed to be re, i mean translated i mean you are supposed to restate it using the rate on the balance sheet date that is called closing rate and in this restatement you make it a gain or you make it a loss that gain or loss supposed to be transferred to profit and loss statement okay and those are there are non monetary items are there like fixed asset intangible assets investment in equity shares prepaid uh, prepaid expenditure and provision for warranty correct na provision for warranty you will not give money to the party you will serve or you will give the product correct na so such kind of items what are you supposed to do no question sub first thing how are you determine the carrying value is it historical cost or is it measured at fair market value or nrv if you say it is historical cost we do not do any restatement that means whatever you have initially recognized using the rate and the balance rate and the date of transaction no that will remain same okay sir if it is fair value or nrv sir got my point if it is a fair value or nrv that is the rate and the date of valuation okay, what did i say rate and the date of valuation which it, which rate generally will do it generally will do valuation on the 31st march so there is a balance sheet date rate that is nothing but the closing rate you are supposed to apply in this translation restatement any gain or loss comes that should go to profit and loss statement that should not be added to any asset that should not be uh, transferred to cox that should not be added to revenue no it has to be go to it has to go to other expenses or other income correct if there is a gain it should be other income if it is a loss then it is going to be other expenses it should be booked okay right to this rule of charging it to profit and loss account there are some two exceptions two exceptions which are given by the para 46a of the accounting standard level okay but again listen this is an optional option this is not mandatory if the company goes with the accounting policy choice no i want we want to do like this if you say specifically then you go no sir i don't want to do it then you can keep quiet and you charge all that to profit and loss statement okay this is an optional and uh, as i told you it's like prospective that means you have an option from whichever the day you wanted to select it that from that day only it will be applicable for the previous whatever you have accounted to pnl nothing is going to be changed right and again this rule is applicable only for the long term foreign currency monetary items ltfcmi long term foreign currency mont long term that is more than 12 months foreign currency you know foreign currency monetary item i explained what is monetary item if all mo mo monetary item means it can be a liability it can be an asset correct now it is an asset which is receivable in terms of money or liability which is payable in terms of money i told you correct now only for those items but you have if you want to apply if you want to take a choice if you want to take this option no you have to apply to all the foreign currency long term foreign currency monetary item it's not like i will apply for the first item next item i will not apply nothing doing you are supposed to apply to each and every thing okay here, here there are two things actually what are the two things my dear yeah well if you have like like ltfc mi that is nothing but loan taken if it is loan taken directly related to depreciable asset right situation number 2 is what it is not the first one first one in the sense it may be asset it may be not for the purpose of the depreciable asset if it is related to depreciable asset in the restatement or the time of settlement settlement in the sense of payment you may get a foreign exchange gain or foreign exchange loss that foreign exchange gain or foreign exchange loss should be added to the asset added to the asset i mean it may be plus or minus if it is a gain you will reduce it from the asset if it is a loss you will add it to the asset okay instead of charging it to pnl it will be added to the asset okay if 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 that long term for ltfc mi is directly related to depreciable asset and if you had taken the choice as per the question or as per the practicality then only it will happen otherwise it will be charged to profit and loss statement in general correct so second situation second situation is which is not related to a depreciable asset that means which is not related to category 1 is equal to category 2 okay so under that circumstance what will happen sir okay whatever the gain or loss you will get it from such lt fc mi 
you are supposed to transfer it to a new account. What is this? FCMITD account. What is FCMITD? Foreign Currency Monetary Item Translation Difference Account. It is a reserve account which will sit under the reserve sum surplus and whatever it goes there, you know, that should be amortized over the period of the remaining life of the MI. MI monetary item, remaining period of the MI may you are supposed to adjust it. Okay, that is the thing actually. Right. So situation number two. Situation number topic number two. Topic number two is I told you translation of the foreign currency. So not foreign, foreign operations. Foreign operations are what? I told you it may be foreign branch, foreign subsidiary, foreign associate, foreign uh, joint venture. Correct. Now, that is called foreign operations. So, if I have a foreign branch, that is only in your syllabus, my dear. If you have a foreign branch, foreign branch, they must have recorded the transactions in the foreign currency. Correct. Now, they must have recorded in foreign currency. Right. So, once after recording the foreign currency transactions, right. So, the trial balance will come in the foreign currency. That is first supposed to be converted into Indian currency. Then that will be added to my head office trial balance. So, you are going to add it. So, how do you add it? So, before you add it, it is the, I mean, how do you translate it? How do you translate this depending upon the classification of the foreign operation? Is it a, is it a integral foreign operation or is it a non-integral foreign operation? Got it? Yeah, if it is integral foreign operation, yeah, if it is integral foreign, op integral foreign operation means it is, it is part and parcel of the main business. I mean, it doesn't have a great, I mean, it doesn't have a significant autonomy. The branch does not have a significant autonomy. Like it is like a sales office. I mean, we'll produce in India and we'll sell the, all the goods to outside India. Outside India, they will just sell it and they'll collect the money and they'll send it back to India. Such kind of circumstance. Non-integral foreign operation. Non-integral foreign operation in the sense it's like independent branch. It has a significant, what is that? It has a significant uh, autonomy. Autonomy. It can do its job. It can do its job on your own. I mean, they can borrow, they can produce, they can pay in their local currency, they can appoint people if they want. They can do independently their business. So, depending upon the classification of the foreign operation, the translation will take place. If it is a integral foreign operation, when you receive the trial balance, you know, monetary items will be used. Closing rate, non-monetary items depends upon the historical cost. I to know. I mean, rate on the date of uh, rate on the date of the initial recognition will be taking and know if it is measured at fair value or the NRB, then we will be using the closing rate. All the PNL accounts will apply the actually speaking rate on the date of transaction, but practically it is difficult. That's why yearly average rate will be taken. Yearly average, only in the topic number two, yearly average will come. But in topic number one, no yearly average will come. It will not come, correct? No? Right. So it is a contingent liability. Contingent liability is also on balance sheet date only. No? That's why closing date will be taken. So it is a non-integral foreign operation. Hai to, what are you supposed to do? Simple, my dear. All the balance sheet items, monetary, non-monetary items, except share capital and etc. Okay, resource and surplus. All the monetary and non-monetary items, you know, they mean basically assets and liabilities side will be using the closing rate. Only one rate. What about the PNL item? Rate on the date of transaction, same thing. This is same. Convenient liabilities also, same thing. Like that, it will happen. Okay. Right. So, and again, one more point is that if it is integral foreign operation, when you translate into rupees, you will get some foreign exchange difference. That foreign exchange difference should be transferred to profit and loss statement. Okay. So, if it is a non-integral foreign operation, that time also you will get a foreign exchange difference. That foreign exchange difference, you are supposed to transfer it to a separate account called foreign currency, what is that? Mm, FCTR, foreign currency translation reserve. It is a reserve we should go and sit in the resource and surplus. Till what time, sir? Till this non-integral foreign operation is held by the company. Okay, the day when you sell that, I mean that operation, the branch, branch only sold off, sir. Okay, when you sell the branch in the future, that day, what do you do that day? That day you will transfer it to profit and loss statement. And FCTR can be a positive number. FCTR can be a negative number as well. I hope you got it. And the last topic, which is foreign exchange forward, contracts okay here if you take the foreign con foreign forward contract what is forward contract we are doing today and that i will come and, and at a future date i will pay you this much of indian rupees you are supposed to give me this many of dollars or i will give you the dollars you should give me the rupees that's all is the contract so here first thing 
Why are you entering into foreign currency forward contract? So there are two reasons. What are the two reasons, my dear? One is for my own purpose. That is nothing but hedging purpose. And the next purpose is like trading or speculation purpose. If it is for hedging purpose, no, then you are supposed to determine two things. Okay, what is the spot price? And what is the forward price? Okay, the difference between spot and forward price, that difference is called either premium or either discount. Okay, you are purchasing that. You are buying at a higher price or you are buying at a lower price. Are you are selling at a higher price or you are selling at a lower price. Okay, whatever the difference between the spot price and the forward price is supposed to be allocated over the period of the agreement. It should be allocated over the period of the agreement. Okay, agreement means it may be a contract for four months. Yes, allocated for four months, my dear. Now, so this is related to trading or speculation business. Okay, it's a business for you. When it is a business, no, then this premium word, premium and uh, I mean uh, discount word will not come. Then what are you supposed to do? Very simple. As on 31st March, what is the forward rate and what is the market rate today? Today is on 31st March, what is the market rate? You are for that contract, you are supposed to look at. Okay, so if are you making a gain till 31st March, have you got a gain? Yes, gain, book that, that, okay, market rate minus Forward rate, if you have got a gain, transfer it to p and L. I got a loss, book it to the profit and loss statement. Nothing you should keep it. You are supposed to transfer it to profit and loss statement. Okay. Right. Let's enter into the next standard, which is accounting standard 13. Right. This is also, an, I mean, a small standard, but good standard. Okay. Yes. Generally, the questions will come. Questions are being asked in 8 marks or 10 marks questions. Correct? Na? Right. So, accounting for investments. First, what is investment? Investment is an asset. Correct? Na? Investment is an asset held for. Held for not for my use purpose. Correct? It is for others use purpose. Held for what my dear? Held for rental income. Held for dividend income. Held for interest income. Held for royalty income. Or such similar purpose. But not held for sale in the ordinary course of business. Correct? Na? If it is held for ordinary course of business, then it is called as inventory. That is as per accounting standard. 2, that's accounting standard 2 should be applied, but not the standard. But this is an investment. Correct? Na? Yes. So next, how do you recognize it? Yes, like other standards, other assets, no? Initial recognition, subsequent measurement. Initially, any kind of investment, initially, we don't do the classification of the asset. No, we don't do any classical current investment and non-current investment will not come into the picture initially. It should be measured at cost. It should be measured at cost. And what about the subsequent measurement? Subsequently, it is supposed it is depending upon the classification. That time we'll talk whether it is at I mean what is that current investment, non-current investment, current investment, how to measure, non-current investment or long-term investment, how to measure it. Okay. Right. Initial measurement. Yes, initial measurement, I told you now, anything. What is the cost at the date of acquisition? When you are purchasing, what is the cost? Cost includes what? All the cost. That is the basic cost of purchasing the asset, any brokerage, any non-refundable taxes, anything. Correct? Na? And correct. Registration. I purchased a building for investment. Registration fees will be there. Brokerage will be there. Correct? Na? You must be paying some GST. You must be paying some uh, T. Whatever it is. Everything which is a cost which you are not able to get back. No. That's supposed to be taken. Sir, I must have bought it by payment of shares, sir. If you bought in shares, no, then here, fair market value of the shares or securities, what you are issuing, you are supposed to take it. No, sir, barter system may kharida, sir. Not a problem. Then fair market value of the asset given or fair market value of the asset taken, whichever is clearly evident, you are supposed to apply. Okay. Here, when you purchase the investment, correct, you may get an income. Okay, that income may be by way of dividend or by way of interest. So that income, how do you account it? The first income you have to determine whether this whether this income is a pre-acquisition income or post-acquisition income. Correct now, right? I acquired on 14, 14 2024 I acquired, but the income pertaining to before the date of acquisition, income pertaining to before the date of acquisition, that is called pre-acquisition income. Pre-acquisition income it is always considered that when you have bought it. It, it, it is already included in the purchase price. Since it is included in the purchase price, when you get the receipt of that money, should be reduced from the cost of the investment. 
should be reduced from the cost of investment. That's why if you get a cash of any dividend or something, if it is a pre-acquisition income, cash account debit to investment account, you will do it. Sir, I purchased on 1-4-2024. I got an income related to 24-25, sir. That means it is post-acquisition income. Post-acquisition income is nothing but earned income earned by the company. Then that's why that should be charged to profit. I mean, transfer it to profit and loss statement as an income. Okay, sir, I got bonus shares. Yes, bonus shares, you are not, bonus shares means obviously you are not paid anything. But only number of shares increases. But what about the cost? Whatever I paid earlier, that is the, that is the cost related to this bonus shares. Okay, right shares also. Yes, right shares, you must have paid extra money. Because to exercise the right, you are supposed to pay some money. Right, that is the real cost for it. Sometimes what happens, these rates I will be able to transfer it to somebody. Then if you transfer, if you get some money from the other party, you know, that is an income, other income I am supposed to transfer it. Okay, no, 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 I am not transferring it, I am only purchasing. Then whatever the amount you paid to the company, that will be the, that is the cost of the thing. I hope you have understood. Correct now. Next, let's come to the subsequent subsequent measurement. Subsequent measurement. Subsequent measurement, I told you it is based on the classification. Classification as it current and long term. What is current? What is current? Current in the sense, if you satisfy both the conditions, then it is called current investment. What is the first one is what? It should be readily realizable. That means easily convertible into cash. Second one, I intended to hold it for more than 12 months. Okay, minimum, I mean more than 12, sorry, minimum less than 12 months, then it is going to be 12, I mean current investment. If it is classified as current investment, it will be measured at cost or fair market value, whichever is lower. Okay, if the fair market value went down, then it is the difference amount should be transferred to profit and loss as a gain or loss. I mean, it's, it's obviously loss because cost or FMV, whichever is lower, not upper, no? Correct, no? Whichever is lower, you are going to take it as a loss to my profit and loss hitting. Okay, long term investment. If it is what is long term investment, which is if it doesn't satisfy the current investment two condition, then it will fall under long term investment. It is always measured at cost unless until if there is a permanent diminution. That means other than temporary diminution, we will call it right. If there is, I mean, if there is a there is a fall and it is not expected to come back in the very near future. Okay, under that circumstance, then we will make a provision for the investment. Otherwise, we don't do anything. Okay, right. Investment property. Investment property means what? Investment property means investment in the building or investment in the land or land and building both. Okay, why are you investing in the land and building? That is meant for basically rentals or capital appreciation purpose. So, investment property is a building, no, sir. It should be under the PP. No. If it is meant for rentals or capital appreciation purpose, you should never classify it as a PPE. It should be presented under the heading investment. Under the heading investment, investment property are supposed to record it. So then how is it, how, how should this be accounted for? for? Right, how should the standard itself says accounting should be dealt by accounting standard 10. So they only said it. Under accounting standard 10, you have got two models, no sir? Cost model or revaluation model. Which model? It is only cost model. That is cost minus accumulated depreciation minus accumulated accumulated impairment loss. Then different, I mean, net number is supposed to be presented. Okay, that is how this is the matter. Okay, next, sale of investments took place. Yes, it can take place. Any gain or loss on sale of investment, that should go to profit and loss statement. It will not go to any revaluation reserve, it will not go to any reserve, nothing. It should go to profit and loss statement. So, how do you determine profit or loss? Very simple, sale proceeds minus any brokerage is something is that you will cut it minus the average, if you forecast, cut basically what is the, sir, not before, average cost. Average cost is supposed to be taken. So in the question they told us to do FIFO method. Now follow them if they say that what should I do? As per the question you write it but as per the accounting standard to determine the profit or loss we are supposed to apply the average cost but as it is specifically mentioned in the question I am following FIFO method. Okay. Actually speaking it is not FIFO method or LIFO method. It is only average cost. Okay, next classification, reclassification. What is reclassification? Initially, I classified something as current because I thought of selling within 12 months. But maybe my intention and business circumstances changed that okay, I need to sell it at later point. More than 12 months, I wanted to hold it. Now, current investment is getting reclassified to long term investment. Then, what should I do? Very simple. What do, how do you value if it is a current investment? Cost or FMV, whichever is lower. On the date of reclassification, now measure cost or FMV, whichever is lower. Some answer will come, no. That will be treated as cost for the next classification. That will be treated as a cost for the long-term investment. That's all. Sir, now, long-term investment, 
I am classifying as a current investment. Very simple. Long term investment, what do you do? Either cost or cost minus if there is any provision. That is the carrying amount. So cost or carrying amount, whichever is lower, will come. That number should be taken as a cost for the cost for the current investment you are supposed to follow, my dear. Okay, right. That's all. This is about the accounting standard. Accounting standard 11.